Hello again, everyone. Edwin Learner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be giving you my Virgo July 2018 horoscope forecast. And yes, this does apply and pertain to the sun, moon, and ascendant. First thing up is uh, as far as July goes, the sun will be in Cancer from the 1st until the 22nd. So the 11th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for Virgo. So at this time for Virgo, there could be a strong concentration of energy, focus, and attention on, uh, on friends acquaintances, goals, aspirations, one's future, uh, clubs, organizations, and groups. And, and given that we're talking about cancer and energy done with a lot of tenacity, a lot of sensitivity and emotion, and also with a lot of nurturing energy, nurturing one's goals and aspirations, perhaps uh, reasons connected with safety uh, and security uh, as well and um, and also uh, really with a lot of sympathetic and empathetic Cancerian uh, energy as well. Next thing up is well as far as July goes the Sun will be in Leo from the 22nd until the 31st so the 12th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So for Virgo, there could be a very strong concentration of energy, focus, and attention on one's limitations, uh, restrictions, uh, hidden adversaries, uh, those less fortunate uh, than one uh, self, such as the impoverished, the homeless, the oppressed, the hungry. Uh, also, the the focus, attention, and uh, concentration of energy on one's fears, uh, dreams, uh, also uh, self undoing perhaps, and also even uh, in some cases mental illness. In some cases, this could be shining the light on some mental illness and some Leo-like mental illness, perhaps such as delusions of grandeur, uh, perhaps. But it could also uh, shine the light on a Leo, a hidden adversary. It could be a Leo sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply one that embodies Leo-like characteristics. So uh, anyway, and also the vitality and stamina might be a little bit more diminished than usual at this time. Hence, we are talking about the sun and that um, to, in, in the 12th house. But you might be showing a little more of that. It could be that near inexorable and defatic Leo energy in private matters, though it doesn't mean you can't use it toward uh, toward those uh, matters. So anyway, next thing up is uh, there will be a partial solar eclipse in Cancer on July 12th. So the 11th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time, when we're talking about a partial solar eclipse, they, this can be basically like a, an inflated or enlarged uh, new moon in terms of its impact. I mean, it's like a new moon, but it's uh, but it can have a little bit more sustained and protracted effect, and and it could be more life altering. It could even be a, it could be something connected with a chance encounter that leads to really things that could affect you for uh, for a very uh, long duration. Now. Um, this could be a time where you might meet a new Cancerian friend or acquaintance or one that embodies Cancerian uh, characteristics or it could be a Cancer, Sun, Moon, or Senate. It could be someone you meet uh, and it could be a group or an organization, uh, perhaps. And it could be, too, where, where you might start some new uh, Cancerian-like uh, aspiration and it might really be something that's very life altering and something that you do uh, for a very good uh, period and I mean it could be something uh, of course I mean something cancer related cancer and related such as uh, laundry catering cooking uh, home renovation something with water such as lifeguard work or um, or even um, oceanography could be another example something with boating I mean there could be I mean obviously that can cover a multitude of things and also too it could be a new period of perhaps being very um, really more sympathetic and nurturing toward your friends and also tenaciously uh, deciding to tenaciously chase your goals and aspirations and this could really I mean in, in like I stated before when you're talking about a partial solar eclipse it could really be very life-altering and it could have a stronger impact than just a regular new moon anyway next thing up is there will be a full moon lunar eclipse in Aquarius on July 27th so the sixth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted 
At this time uh, for Virgo, this could be a time where Virgo might become tired, full, exasperated, perhaps an idiosyncratic, bizarre, unusual behavior, perhaps from a fellow employee, somebody in their daily routine, or it could be in somebody even in their health life, so to speak. And when I say health life, such as somebody that maybe they know at a, um, at a fitness club, uh, for example. Um, this could also be about really this full uh, selfless and humanitarian energy injected into one's daily routine. It could be uh, in matters pertaining to service. It could even be uh, regarding pets, perhaps. And also, uh, in some cases, it could it, this could reflect a completion or culmination of an Aquarius-like uh, work project. It could be something connected with electronics, computers, uh, doing some electrical work wiring um it could be something with aerospace astronomy even innovation in some cases so anyway and also too it could be a revelation or unveiling in some cases of an aquarium like health issue it could be something just simply enigmatic or unusual it could be something connected with shocks um, such as like the, those, you know, I don't know if any of you have ever had uh, nerve damage. I have extensive nerve damage. I have Uranus almost, almost exactly conjunct my sixth house in my natal chart. And Uranus is, I mean, Aquarius and Uranus about electricity. I mean, Uranus is connected with, with shocks, electricity. So, I mean, this could be something where you could be getting, even in some cases, some really odd shock uh, sensations to your body. It could be something with nerves. Or it could simply be something else, I mean, Aquarius related, such as something with the shins or the ankles, uh, perhaps at this time. And, uh, and this could, and it could have a very strong impact on what you're able to do as far as a uh, future, uh, perhaps work and abilities go. So it's something to look at. Now, um, and especially if this is like making, say, an in conjunct to your, uh, say, to your first house in your actual uh, natal chart is in conjuncts. I, I would say especially from the sixth house could be about health related issues. Now, going to, uh, well, Mercury will be in Leo. Uh, so the 12th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. It will be retrograde from like the 26th till the 31st. This could be a time where you might experience some limitations in communications uh, at this time. Um, also too, there might be a tendency to dominate conversations with aunts, uncles. Um, it could be people that are prominent in your private life. Uh, also speaking with authority and conviction regarding a uh, 12th house matter, such as limitations and restrictions, maybe being very knowledgeable about uh, things connected with mental illness. And given it's going to be retrograde for that latter part of the month, this could be about reviewing perhaps creative ideas uh, in seclusion and solitude uh, at this time. And, and given that's a 12th house we're talking about, it could be things connected like creative writing in terms of things of, of fantasy or fiction. Now, also too, this could be about, I mean, remember that Mercury can also be about uh, siblings, that it's more than just communications. It could be that Leo siblings or Leo sun, moon ascendant siblings or one that ones that embody Leo-like characteristics might figure strong uh, in your uh, private life at this time, in some cases could be a hidden adversary or, I mean, and they might even be driving you crazy, not literally crazy, but like the, but figuratively speaking, since we're talking about the 12th house. And also this could be about a mental review of being, of, of really, uh, of perhaps whether you're being uh, gener generous enough or overly generous to those that might be less fortunate than yourself, such as the impoverished, the homeless, and the, uh, oppressed uh some cases it could be leo thieves <laughs> i mean remember mercury can be connected with thieves now and leo thieves in some cases might be tied into secret sorrows and remember we are talking about the 12th house of limitations as well so uh when i say leo thieves leo sun moon ascendant thieves are ones that simply embody leo like characteristics next thing up Ver uh, venus will be in leo uh, for as far as July goes, from the 1st until the 9th, so the 12th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time, well, in some cases, this could be a clandestine affair uh, with a Leo sun, moon, or ascendant, or one that embodies Leo-like characteristics. It could be that a, that maybe a Leo love 
may drive you crazy, at least figuratively speaking, Leo, Sun, Moon, Ascendant again, or one that embodies Leo-like characteristics. Uh, Leo connection might dissipate or disappear for a while. Uh, it could be you might be experiencing uh, financial limitations and restrictions due to extravagance and exorbitant spending. Now, also, this might be you might be spending more money than usual on aunts and uncles, those less fortunate than yourself. And also, this could be a period for strongly valuing extroversion and gregariousness with the people that are prominent in your private life. And also, maybe as I say, we're spending more on those less fortunate, such as the homeless, the oppressed, and the hungry. And um, anyway. Um, well, this could be a, a time to now going to uh, the next thing I want to talk about is Venus will be in Virgo as far as July goes from the 9th until the 31st. So the first house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time uh, for Virgo, this would be a time where one might spend on oneself, but very frugally and really uh, and about really uh, making oneself look, you know, of a better appearance, dressing even more meticulously, perhaps than usual, appearing more attractive than usual in general. This could be a time when a Virgo relationship from one's early childhood, it could be a Virgo sun, moon or ascendant or one that simply embodies Virgo like characteristics uh, might might come up. It could be someone from early childhood or somebody that's going to be prominent in one's uh, perhaps new beginnings at this time. Also, the way this can manifest, it could be about uh, really the enjoyment of analysis and, and detail-oriented things, fitness, and this could be readily seen on a first uh, impression. And also valuing a lot of, of precision, exactitude, reticence, uh, uh, modesty, and, and, and again, often it could be very well seen on a first impression. And also a Virgo love might uh, affect uh, the outlook on life very strongly uh, at this time. And, um, and maybe even the appearance as well. So anyway, um, and also maybe even that love of fitness could really have an impact on the physical body, especially if we're talking about the actual first house in one's natal chart. Anyway, next thing up is Mars will be in Aquarius at this time. It will be retrograde. The sixth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time uh, for Virgo, this could be where Virgo might experience more contentious and acrimonious situations with people in their workplace, their daily routine, their health life. Uh, perhaps it could be with aunts and uncles. It could be where, the, uh, where there could be some angry situations regarding idiosyncratic, bizarre, unusual behavior by aunts, uncles, by um, Perhaps uh, people that are in one's uh, workplace and the daily routine, prominent in one's health life. It could even be somebody that maybe that you might be servicing or providing some kind of service to at this time. Now, also in some cases, uh, this could be about some kind of surgery, uh, something Aquarius, like something with the shins or the ankles uh, at this time. And... Um, also, um, it, this could be about putting a lot of this selfless and humanitarian energy, uh, perhaps into the daily routine, into servicing others, and even in your work life uh, as well. And uh, two, this could be, I mean, considering we're talking about retrograde energy, this could be about going back to something Aquarius like that could be work related. It could be uh, something connected with computers, electronics, uh, innovation aerospace some um, astronomy astrology even so something that could be aquarius like that you might be going back to that's something that you, you were working on maybe you didn't quite finish and this could be the opportune time to do that considering we're talking about retrograde energy next thing up is well jupiter will still be in scorpio it'll be retrograde from july 1st to like around the 10th and the third house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time uh, for Virgo, well, this could be about some luck and fortune, perhaps through uh, making, maybe doing something of a transforming nature in, in, in terms of uh, something third house related, such as rebuilding a vehicle. It could be recycling in your neighborhood. Uh, also, too, as I've stated in, in previous videos, of course, that Jupiter can be paradoxical. 
I mean, it's strongly benign and benevolent, but it could also have the tendency to enlarge and expand. And this, and this could perhaps expand and enlarge uh, nefarious, surreptitious, mischievous type behavior in one's neighborhood. It could be, uh, in some cases, it could increase criminal activity. Uh, perhaps um, really uh, another thing uh, about this too, this could be about really uh, really having that, it, this could be very fortuitous for going beyond uh, the superficial and subterfuge regarding communications in general, and also perhaps with matters with uh, with siblings, uh, with neighbors, it could be people prominent in your early education, people that you see in your um, in your short journeys uh, as well. And uh, really, and, and also, I mean, deciphering the character and motives of these people uh, at this time, it could be very beneficial for, and also could be, and the way this can manifest too, is it could be where there might be some sexual secrets unveiled, maybe about maybe about some neighbor, or it could be regarding a, a sibling, somebody you know in your day-to-day -day communications, somebody you know that's prominent in your short journeys. And remember, given that this is retrograde, this could be also about reviewing uh, a deep profound philosophy regarding uh, your really about your communications uh, things connected with your early education and perhaps even siblings as well anyway next thing up is Saturn will be in Capricorn still so the fifth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted it will be a uh, retrograde uh, this the way this could manifest is this could be where you might experience uh, restrictions and limitations in matters pertaining to love romance children even matters with gambling or speculation uh, even even to your uh, fun and enjoyment at this time you might feel that you're working laboriously just to keep a romantic relationship intact and um and even maybe a situation with a child uh, in some cases, or maybe trying to work hard just to have your uh, have your fun and enjoyment. Uh, remember that, given that Saturn is going to be retrograde, when Saturn's retrograde, it could indicate that one may not necessarily be cognizant of his or her restrictions and limitations. And this could be in matters pertaining to children, uh, to a love romantic uh, situation. Uh, it could even be to gambling in some cases, so you have to be careful. Even though we're talking about Saturn and planet restriction, when it's retrograde, you might not always understand the restrictions, and you don't want to go overboard uh, and working too hard, so to speak, on, on something of a speculative nature, especially if you hadn't checked everything out uh, connected with it. So, and all as far as all the pros and cons go. Uh, but anyway. Also, too, uh, this could be where you might be taking care of a sickly or debilitated child, a romantic partner, simply one that might be prominent in your, maybe your hobbies or you share some hobbies with or a creative endeavor, uh, perhaps that you know uh, very well. In some cases, it might be where there might even be a government restriction, given that we're talking about um, talking about Saturn, uh, government restriction that might be prohibiting some kind of fun or enjoyment, at least for you. And given its Capricorn energy, it could cause you to feel somewhat despondent and melancholy. Anyway, next thing up is Uranus will be uh, in Taurus still. So the ninth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time uh, for, uh, for Virgo, uh, the way this could uh, pan out, this could be about perhaps formulation of new ways to make money, which of course could might benefit you if you're trying to uh, publish something or you're trying to maybe go uh, take some course, a higher education course. Uh, this could also be about maybe even publication of maybe the, the formulation of, of new financial uh, methods uh, that you might put out or even something just Uranus like in general it could be something co connected with computers or new technology electronics uh, innovation aerospace something with the future uh, perhaps and um, at this time too this could be a case where you might be where uh, you might have Taurus friendships or ones that embody Taurus-like characteristics that may be uh, impacting your philosophical outlook or even something where with your religious belief uh, beliefs at this time as well. Uh, the way this can manifest as well, it could be where you may uh, take a college course 
that might be a Uranus like you might take some kind of course connected with computers electronics um, it might be um, something with aerospace uh, astronomy even doing something uh, perhaps with astrology and esoteric subject uh, perhaps so anyway um, well, the next thing up is uh, Neptune will be in Pisces, so the seventh house as well will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time, uh, for uh, for Virgo, this could be um, about the dissipation and dissolving in some cases of a business partnership. It could be relationships in general, the significant other. On a positive note, sometimes it could be about the dissipation and dissolving of a legal matter or even an open adversary and, uh, and it also could be, too, where maybe even significant others and others in general might be more nebulous and unclear uh, than usual at this time or may even become involved with, uh, with drugs or alcohol. You might have the unfortunate propensity at this time to attract people that are in uh, situations less fortunate than yourself or even ones that are involved with drugs or alcohol. I have this position natally. I have Neptune in my seventh house. And sadly, I have this unfortunate tendency and propensity to attract people, uh, sadly, that might be involved in some kind of recreational drug use or people that are... Um, you know, there might be alcoholics and and uh, really um, and sadly, they're just something about, you know, that's almost like that curse of that, that placement, unfortunately, it's natally for me. But anyway, you might have more difficulty as far as the character composition of others in general. Uh, at this time, this could be a time where you might feel like you're doing a lot of self-sacrificing for others, but not really getting an overabundance in uh, return. Uh, and also, um, to uh this could be a period as well i mean neptune I, I see as being about disappearances as well some cases it could be of uh, really um it could be maybe uh, an important relationship you have it could be a significant other uh so those are some things uh to look at as far uh, as this goes on this time and also too this could be about maybe doing some public speaking uh, on the metaphysical which can, could include astrology and especially if you are in that kind of um, in that profession right now so anyway well the next thing up is uh, Pluto will be in Capricorn still so the fifth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted so at this time uh, for Virgo this could be uh, about in some cases I know you don't want me to say the dreaded D word but you know I do it anyway this could be in some cases about the actual uh, could be a literal death of a child it could be somebody it could be a romantic partner somebody you're in a lover relationship with um, it could also maybe be somebody that maybe was prominent in your uh, in your fun your amusement enjoyment somebody that you shared that you knew well that you shared a hobby or creative endeavor with uh, I have this placement uh, natally and I have no, I've stated this in other videos, I'll say it again for those that might not know. So I, and I have no children. I have a strong Cancerian influence in my chart. And I have absolutely no children to this day. And I'm almost 50 years old. So go figure. It's also my Pluto is intercepted in my fifth house. So it obviously makes it more exasperating, more stressful and aggravating to me dealing with that but that is uh, that is the truth and i'm saying at this time i mean if you're somebody that doesn't have any kids and you and you're having uh this at this time and if you're having pluto in your fifth house it could diminish those chances of actually having one because remember that pluto i mean saturn is about restriction limitation but pluto can simply wipe out and obliterate um also too uh, this could be about a time where you might be doing something of uh, plutonian as far as fun amusement and enjoyment uh something with the supernatural the occult um astrology it could be digging deep into matters uh really um and also too it, you got a guard at this time perhaps about being about compulsive uh gambling at this time or being overly fixated of something on a speculative nature uh, at this time more so than usual you might be experiencing power issues and struggles with children and people that you and somebody that you might be in a love romantic relationship with at this time so anyway 
Well, next thing up is the North Node will be uh, in Leo still, so the 12th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time uh, for Virgo, this could be where um, when you're talking about the North Node in transit, this could be about uh, having to confront and address certain things. And at this time, you might be having to confront maybe an aunt or an uncle or even someone prominent in your private life that might be ex uh, might be showing uh, arrogant, domineering, bombastic, overbearing qualities at this time. Uh, in some cases, it could be about confronting a mental illness. I mean, it could be a Leo mental illness, such as that delusions of grandeur, that grandiose delusions in some isolated cases. Also about taking pride and dignity in your private life at this time and and maybe if you might be directed toward being very generous and magnanimous toward those less fortunate than yourself such as the homeless the oppressed the hungry and the impoverished um and another thing too is that it could be where you might be directed towards showing fortitude and courage in weeding out those hidden adversaries those ones that that might be pretending to be your friends but really are not uh at this time so anyway um and also too it, it might be a time where you might uh where you know it's over extravagance might be one self undoing and you might have to address uh that as well at this time so anyway uh next thing up is uh the black moon loath it's something to drink here for a minute people i think this uranus and taurus uh, might be having some effect on my voice right now but Anyway, what I want to get to is uh, the next thing up to talk about is the Black Moon Lilith will be in Capricorn still, so the fifth house is will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time uh, for Virgo, well, uh, when you have the Black Moon Lilith, uh, this could be about something that could put us in a strong state of fear or trepidation. And this could be the way this can manifest. This could be perhaps about relinquishing the authority, maybe with a child, with a love romantic relationship, or even uh, even your own authority in, in your own uh, fun and your amusement at this time. It could be the time uh, where a formidable cap adversary is unveiled. It could be somebody that maybe um, could be a child. It could be, uh, it could be a lover. It could also be somebody that was prominent in your um, in your fun, your amusement, your enjoyment, perhaps. Uh, this could be too. Uh, also, that when you're talking about the Black Moon Lilith, the way this could you know work out with the Black Moon Lilith is that sometimes this could be about something uh, about yourself that's unveiled and revealed that you know it's kind of let out of the bag, so to speak, that you didn't want to come out, but it does come out. It could be about a restricting or depressing. Uh, limiting love life at this time that may come out or something where you have very limit and strong limitations in your fun amusement and enjoyment and uh really uh in, in any and it could be too where you might be you know maybe somebody maybe a lover or maybe it could be a, a child or or somebody that might be fifth house uh fifth house related uh, it could be someone you find out is using maybe sexuality in order to attain uh, their ambitions at this time. And uh, anyway, last but not least, Chiron will be in Aries, so the eighth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time for Virgo, this could be about perhaps uh, emotional wounds uh, and perhaps some suffering. It could be over... Um, Maybe uh, I would say lack of initiative and enterprise in matters connected with taxes over an inheritance matter or insurance. It could be on not capitalizing on opportunities to make that major transformation and change. Maybe not showing really the aggressiveness or the courage in maybe in crisis situations and being overly passive and maybe really lamenting over over uh, certain things that for maybe for not acting maybe as strongly in those situations as perhaps you could have uh, maybe not capitalizing on an opportunity maybe to receive some kind of a monetary support that maybe you, you strongly needed but 
uh, but because, but for whatever reasons you might have simply refused uh, as an example maybe in some cases this could be about maybe unworthy you know when you're talking about Chiron and Aries this could be about feelings of unworthiness and we're talking about the eighth house it could be unworthiness sexually or maybe that uh, inability to make a major change or transformation or simply not feeling worthy of having an intimate or sexual relationship at this time but remember we're talking about Chiron is the wounded healer so in ways uh, that you might be suffering and struggling in connection with Chiron and Aries in the eighth house you could help others out dealing with comparable situations and do so with a lot of Aries like initiative enterprise courage fortitude and aggressiveness Anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment for my Virgo July 2018 horoscope forecast. Stay tuned next time where I'll be giving you my Libra July 2018 horoscope forecast. Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone. Because astrologically speaking, the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart, and not just one. Until next time, people, stay well.